morning. We hope you had an awesome Christmas and it is so good to see you back here in church. Won't you come on in and let's begin to worship. Well, good morning, good morning. We need to take a little more time for the offering to get taken up. That's always a good thing in a Baptist church. Amen, all right? Give those guys some time and while they're still collecting that towards the back, turn around to everybody and wish everybody a happy new year this time. Happy new year. We're on it, 2019. How many of you, while we're still waiting on that, how many of you still have some Y2K items you've still got stashed? Toilet paper, bottled water, anything, you can still got it, remember? Seemed like just yesterday we were getting ready for the year 2000. Now we're heading into the year 2019. Hard to believe how fast time flies. Today we're going to move from the manger, which we just celebrated, the birth of Christ, to remembering that his birth led to a cross. And that will be a way we remember through the Lord's Supper in just a moment together. Uh, that's not something we do just traditionally or as a custom, but we love at the end of every year to kick off going into the new year, remembering well what Jesus Christ did for us with that first Christmas gift. It was during World War II that many mothers who were left behind with their children who would pray every day and every night with their children for the safe return of their husbands. As they would try to keep the memory of their father in the minds of their children, they would gather around many times and would look at their pictures just so that face would stay familiar in the hearts of their children. One mother I heard about took her daughter every day in the bedroom and would show her that large portrait of her father while he was away. And as they would look at that every night, there was a night where they came together and the little girl turned to her mother and said these words. She said, Mom, wouldn't it be great if Dad could just step out of that frame? Powerful, powerful moment, heartbreaking moment, that desire for her father to be with her in person and back home safe. You know, that's what Christmas really is, and that's what happened the very first Christmas. God stepped out of that heavenly frame for generations. Mankind had looked to the heavens needing a Savior and a Messiah. Asking God to step out of heaven and into our mess and into our pain and into our sin. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. He left his heavenly home. He left his heavenly throne. He took on flesh, was born in a manger, went from a crib knowing that it would lead to a cross. Today as we celebrate, let's stay in that celebratory mode as we're in these holidays. Let's don't stop celebrating just because Christmas was last week. Christmas lives on because he lives on in our hearts through faith. But if we're not careful, we can quickly start moving into a new year. We can quickly move away from the holidays and all of a sudden we find ourselves not celebrating anymore. And I want to make sure today that we celebrate well. You see, yes, Jesus was laid in a manger at Bethlehem, but he would later be laid in a tomb because he'd give up his life on Calvary. And today, we don't want to forget why we celebrate. Not just that he was born, but that he is living still today. If you have the Bible with you today, or if you need to look on with somebody, turn to Romans chapter 3 this morning. Romans chapter 3. I want us to be careful that we don't forget why we come to the Lord's table this morning. That we don't just go through the motions. And be careful that we don't find ourselves celebrating the blessings of God rather than celebrating the God who blesses. Did you hear what I just said? You see, if, it's not, if we're not careful, we get all caught up in the blessings and what God can do for us rather than being all caught up in the one who does bless us. And so I want to refocus us this morning, as God's word will, to remembering the God of grace. Look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 20 this morning. Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. It was because of the works of the law that no flesh would be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's what Brother Tom was praying earlier. What the law could not do, Jesus did for you and me. He goes on to explain, verse 21. So apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all those who believe. Now that gift, that first Christmas gift, is a gift that's offered to all, God's willing that none should perish, but all have everlasting life. But that gift, while it is offered to all, it only becomes your gift if it becomes personally received for those who believe. 
not believing in your head, but the Bible says we must believe in our heart. Verse 22 goes on to say, For all those who believe, there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Look around you. That's talking about every person in this room. Not just you and not just me, but everyone in this room, everyone who's worshiping with us online, every one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Especially if you're a No You Sooner fan. You sinned and fell short of the glory of God all last night. Am I right? All right. Some of you can't relate. Some can. I went to bed at halftime so my heart would be right just to lead us through the Lord's Supper. I did. I went, asked my family. I went to bed at halftime. It was good for the soul. Verse 24. <laughs> and being justified as a gift. How were you justified before the Lord? As a gift. That's Christmas. That's what we just celebrated. This is your gift. Not something that was under one of these bright, shiny trees, but one who would take on this tree. That's how we were justified. But it explains it even better. We were justified as a gift by His grace. Grace means we didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. It was a gift that was freely given because God so loved you. It goes on to say, this gift of grace was done through redemption, which is found in Christ Jesus. You can't find it by coming to church, starting off a new year, fitting in a Sunday morning, and calling that doing right by God. It only comes by a righteous God who came to make it right, who made it right with his life, his death, and his resurrection. That's what we celebrate today. Look at verse 25. This God whom displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith, this was to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. And for this demonstration, I say, out of the righteousness of God at this present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Today, as we take these elements, there's not a single person in this room that deserves what we're about to celebrate. There's not a single person in this room that could stand up and say, man, I deserve Jesus to go to the cross for me. I'm a good old boy, a good old girl, and he should have done it at least for me. Maybe not you, but me. Not one of us deserves it. Not one of us was justified in his eyes because we've all sinned and fallen short of that glory. But he became the justifier. He became our substitute. He took on our punishment for our sins, and he set us free from the bondage of that sin and from the penalty of that sin. Those are the blessings of God that we celebrate with these elements. And the only way he could justify us was to pay the penalty. And what was that penalty? The wages of sin is church membership. No. Wages of sin is baptism. No. The wages of sin is death. That is the only righteous price that could be paid for the penalty we incurred on the sin of our life. Instead of God allowing that to be placed on your life eternally, the eternal one came to this earth, born in a manger, took on a cross to set us free from that penalty. But if we're not careful, there is a tendency to just simply focus on the grace of God and not celebrate the God of grace. Can you do that this morning? Can we transition just from the gift of that grace to the giver of that gift? Could you take a moment to get out of this gift season and focus on the giver? If we're not careful, we have a tendency to focus on the things of God and what we want God to do for us and give to us rather than the God of all things. And there's a tendency to focus on the comfort of God, and certainly he wants to give you that in your need rather than focus on the God of all comfort. It's our tendency to focus on the sacrifice of God, but not celebrate the God that was willing to sacrifice everything for you and for me. And so to take us there, go just a little bit further in the book of Romans, and we're going to come to the table next. Romans chapter 11, turn over there. Turn over a few chapters. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Let's remember this God of grace. And let's remember this God of comfort, this God of provision, this God of sacrifice. Romans chapter 11, verse 33 says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? For from him, look at verse 36, here's the key. For from him, through him, 
and to him are what? All things. As we celebrate through these elements today, these symbols of his love for you, it's symbols of the God of grace. It's a symbol of our God of comfort. It's a symbol of our God of sacrifice. Let's remember him and receive all those things that he does bring, but today worship him and him alone, for all things are unto him. He doesn't need a counselor. And I know perhaps you've struggled with that spiritual gift that you have to be a counselor to a holy God, to clue him in on what he should be doing or what he may not be recognizing or how he's not showing up, and we play counselor to God. But as we see here, quoted in Romans eleven thirty four, 34, he needs no counselor. He is the God of all wisdom. He knows your need this very moment, and he wants to be bigger than that need. He wants to be your all in all. But if we're not careful, we'll get caught up in what we need and miss what we ultimately need, and that's that love relationship with the Holy God. He needs no counselor. He is not lacking, for through him and in him are all things. I don't know this morning if the devil's lying to you and trying to present to you a God who lacks and a God who doesn't care, and a God who doesn't provide, or a God who doesn't show up. But I promise you from the truth of God's word, he lacks in nothing, and he proved it on a cross. Not just in a cradle, not just in his birth. He didn't so love you that he just lived. He so loved you that he laid down his life, and he died. To pay that price, and to give you everything you need. So today, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate him. Yes, we'll celebrate the gift of grace. And yes, we'll celebrate the gift of his provision. But that did not come without a price that was paid. Acts chapter 17, I'll put it on the screen. Verses 24 and 25 says this. It was the God who made this world and all things in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he does not dwell in temples that are made with hands. I want you to understand, this sanctuary is not the dwelling place of God. This sanctuary is. And you may treat this as holy ground in here and walk out. And I want you to understand that holy ground walks out because you are that ground. He came to live in you. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.16, his desire is that he richly dwell in your heart. So look at verse 25. Nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all people life, and breath in all things. We've just spent this holiday season unpacking a lot of gifts. Some people, I hope, loved on you. You may have gotten some bad Santa gifts or whatever you call those dirty Santa or whatever. You may have gotten something you don't need. You've already returned it. You already stood in line for three days at Walmart just to get your money back on something you didn't want. But today, there is no shelf life. There's no shelf life on this holy gift. That gift that was given at Christmas, that gift that we just received, who gives you all things. But here's the deal. You may know about that gift. You may know about this Jesus. You may know about the cross, but do you know him? Has there ever been a time that you've allowed him to be your everything? Or have you tried filling that void, that God-shaped void with something else? Maybe your own self-righteousness? Maybe your own self-accomplishments. Maybe something material of this world, your estate, your, your things, your possessions, the stuff that you desired for Christmas. How's that filling you up? Like a fruitcake, amen? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. But Jesus wants to be your everything. And so today, let's allow Jesus to be that everything. Let's get away from all the trappings of this holiday season and let's just simply come back with hearts of worship. Not just worshiping God because he's the giver of comfort and not just worshiping God because he's the giver of all great gifts and not just because God is the one who provides that safety or that salvation. But remembering the God of all those things. Can we do that together? In Scripture, we are taught, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul gave instructions. I'm going to get our deacons ready to come and to serve. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, giving instructions to the disciples, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a moment, the first element that will come by, we will serve you. And you'll receive a little piece of bread. It is a symbol of the broken body of Jesus Christ. As you receive that element, we want you to hold on to it until everybody's served. The deacons will come back to the front and we'll take that element together. Why do we do that? Because Jesus said, do this. And as often as you do it, you do it not just to eat a little piece of bread and have a religious ceremony. He said, do it in remembrance of me. It'd be good, as we've done during Christmas, to remember his birth. But it's better every single day that we remember why he was born. Amen? So let's just don't stop here at the cradle. Let's remember the God who was born, the God who lived in the flesh a perfect life, and that very God who went to a cross was nailed innocently to take on your guilt, your shame, your penalty. Let's remember the body of Christ, verse 25. In the same way, he would take the cup that night after the supper. And he would say, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus said, remember the price that was paid. It wasn't a cheap price. It wasn't put on plastic. It was put on a body nailed to a cross. That's the price Jesus paid for you and for me. So as often as we do this, we remember him. Not just what he does, but who he is. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man, a person, must examine themselves, and in so doing, then they eat the bread and they drink of the cup. Can we do that together? Can we do what Scripture says we should do? Let's examine our hearts. Maybe you didn't go to bed at halftime. Maybe you got something you need to get right this morning before we go there. Let's do it together. With every head bowed and with every eye closed, I'm going to ask Tom to make his way to the stage. As we come to the Lord, we need to remember that this is a time, a holy time. It's not a ritualistic time. It's not just a normative time. It's not something we just fit in and say, hey, we did the Lord's Supper, yippee. No, this is a holy time. Because it was a holy life, we remember. It was a holy sacrifice that was provided. And it's a holy life you now live through Christ Jesus, your Lord. And I would say to you today, this morning, if you don't have that peace, if you don't have that assurance, if you examine your heart and your heart is empty and it's never been filled with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never surrendered to Him, you've never trusted Him with your life, you've never repented of your sin and said, God, I'm a sinner, I need you to save me. If that's never happened for you, before we go a step further, today is the day of your salvation. And if you're worshiping online, don't tune us out. Don't say, I can't be there to take the elements. You can still worship with us and maybe God's speaking to you or someone in this very room. You say, what do I do if my heart's empty? If I examine my heart and I've never allowed Jesus to be the master and Lord of my heart, what do I do? The Bible says you need to call on his name. You need to receive that gift, Jesus. You receive him by taking him into your life. Just like you took gifts from a tree this Christmas, why don't you take Jesus who died on a tree? Why don't you trust him with your life, your emptiness? Let God fill you, that God-shaped void, right where you are right now by praying this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And God, I need you to justify me, remove my sin, and forgive me. If that's you, you pray that right now. Ask for God's forgiveness, and he'll give it to you as a gift. And then pray this. Dear Lord, I open the door of my heart, and I ask you to come in. The Lord will not force himself on you, but he will become your gift if you'll receive him right now. And if that's you, the Bible says if you just received him to as many as received Jesus as Lord and Savior, to them he gives the right to become the children of God. If you just prayed with us online, reach out to our online pastor. Would you do that? Just tell him I prayed with pastor just now. What do I do next? We want to send you some materials. And we want you to know what it means to know the Lord as Savior. If you just did that in this very room, we're not going to do an invitation today. We're going to remember through the elements. But I would encourage you after this service, find 
one of our ministry staff or maybe a person who invited you today and say, you know what, today I received the Christmas gift. I received Jesus. We want to help you with your decision as well. Others of you who've already trusted Christ, examine your hearts. I'm going to ask our deacons if they would, if they join me here at the front. Make your way all the way up to the front and just remain standing in your lines. We'll get ready to serve together. And while they're making their way, you make your way before the throne of grace. The Bible says in your greatest time of need, you can come boldly to the throne of God's grace. He wants to meet that need. Is that need for forgiveness? Is there something in your heart, something unholy, something that's not pleasing to the Lord? You just confess that right now. If you have children with you today as we take the supper, if there's never been a time where they've trusted Christ yet, they're still young, maybe like Joseph was this summer, they've not yet made that decision, but they, they need to know who Christ is. This is the Lord's Supper for the body of Christ. You might have to explain to them the gospel and tell them there will be a day that they'll celebrate. And that there's nothing wrong with them, it's just they need to understand first why Jesus died and what that means in their life. Take this time just to explain to your children or your grandkids and today, if you'd rather hang on to something in your heart that is unholy, I'd encourage you to not take the supper in an unworthy manner. Just to let it go by. Nobody will judge you. Nobody's going to be watching. This is not to make you feel bad. It's just simply giving you a time to be right with God or real with God. But after you examine your hearts, if you'll let God do what he does, forgive and cleanse of all unrighteousness, and you receive those elements. You hang on to them until we all have received them. We'll take them together. And today we will remember him, the Lord and the Savior of our lives. Gentlemen, let's serve the church. your heart of love grew the rose of Sharon blooming in crimson for all the world to see Lord at your throne I will lay down My praise will be this rose blooms in me. My praise will be this rose blooms in me. Trusting the promise of a carpenter key, I gave you the throne of my life, my Lord. Blessed Messiah, you made my heart see. Sweet rose of Sharon, you are living in me. Out of your heart of love grew the rose of Sharon. Blue for all the world to see. Lord, at your throne, I will lay down my 
Kids, if you'll just stay standing right here, it's fine. Don't need you sitting on laps this morning. If you'll take that piece of bread that you hold in your hands, and maybe you've already been reflecting on that, perhaps you've already broken it. I always take mine and I always break it as Jesus did with his disciples. It says he took that bread and he broke it. No better picture. You got to see the picture. It wasn't just a perfect body. Yes, it was a perfect body. It wasn't just a precious body. It was a precious body, but it's a broken body. Matter of fact, that body was so bruised and so broken for you and me. Scripture tells us that you couldn't even recognize who he was. So swollen with pain, so broken, so rejected by man. He did that because he loves you and me. He said to the disciples, as often as you do this, remember this is me for you. Father, all of us declare that we're unworthy. And yet, God, we receive the fact and the gift that you made us worthy through the blood and through the broken body that you did for us. So, God, today we worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you in that understanding as we remember your broken body. Let's sing this as an act of worship this morning. Words will be on the screen. Would you sing it from your heart to God's? doesn't matter your voice. It matters the heart. Let's sing it together. Only Jesus paid the price for me. Only His love could set me free. Nobody else could open heaven's door. Just Jesus and nothing more. Just Jesus and nothing more only jesus paid the price for me only his love could set me free nobody else could open heaven's door just jesus and nothing just Jesus and nothing. Why well, receive that in your heart? Just Jesus and what? Nothing, nothing more. more. Gentlemen, let's serve the church. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. 
This is my daily bread. Your holy word spoken to me. Desperate for you. And I I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me and I. I I'm desperate for you. without you and I I'm desperate for you Lord I I am lost without you I'm lost without you. As they continued on that night, what had been a religious custom would become an act of worship. What they had done looking backwards to what God had done in Egypt would now become their personal testimony. That they would now have a holy covenant with God. For Jesus held this up and said, this is the blood of a new covenant. Speaking of a whole new relationship. Not one that was a bunch of rules and regulations justified through the law, which could not justify us. But holy sacrifice. He said, this would be my blood, which would establish this new covenant. As often as you do this, remember me. Father God, what a humbling reminder. As we remember through these elements, these pictures of your love, the blood, the holy blood that you shed, cover my sins, our sins. God, why we'll never understand it this side of heaven. We rejoice in it. We worship you, the Lamb of God, 
takes away the sin of the world. This morning, we're going to be dismissed in a little bit different way. We're going to go out the way the disciples went out with Jesus when they celebrated with him. It says they went out into the night. We'll go out into the day singing a hymn of the faith, singing from our hearts. So would you stand with us together? We're going to sing this, and as soon as we're done singing, you'll be dismissed to go live that holy testimony to a world that needs to see the love of God through you. Amen? Let's sing it together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're dismissed. Hey, my name's Breland. You're watching Connection Points, and here is what's going on at PCBC. Please continue to pray for our Next Steps campaign. You can give your best gift toward the new children's building during this month of December. That would be a one-time gift above and beyond your normal tithe. We would also ask that you would be in prayer about the monthly gifts that you can give toward the campaign over the next year. Remember that Night to Shine is coming up so soon and you can go ahead to pcbc.tv slash events to get registered. We couldn't do everything that we do without your generous support. And as we're at the end of 2018, please remember that the deadline for the end of the year giving is December 31st. The church finance office will be open on December 31st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. to take any last financial contributions. And a quick reminder that our Recharge Wednesday night programs are currently on a holiday break and they will return on Wednesday, January 9th. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Breland, and I'd like to invite you to stay engaged and in touch with us through our social media channels. You can subscribe to our YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We hope you have an awesome week, a great new year, and we will see you soon.